Good evening. I'm Susan Patton. On behalf of the faculty of the Eleanor Mann School of Nursing and the class of 2022, welcome to our white coat ceremony. This is not a graduation or a commencement, but a different rite of passage, a beginning. It's not our first virtual white coat ceremony, but it is the first time we are live streaming on YouTube. Typically, at white coat ceremony, this room is filled with 700 plus people standing room only. So I miss seeing all of you out there, but I know you're here and you're celebrating with us. The Arnold P. Gold Foundation established the white coat ceremony in 1993 as a way to welcome new students into the profession of medicine. Today, a white coat ceremony or similar rite of passage takes place at 97% of schools of medicine in the United States and Canada. The ceremony was actually designed by a pediatric oncologist, Dr. Arnold Gold, who called the white coat, the lab coat, a cloak of compassion. And it, the ceremony is meant to welcome new students into their chosen healthcare profession and establish an expectation that students will demonstrate caring as well as scientific proficiency when they deliver care. In 2014, the Gold Foundation partnered with the American Association of Colleges of Nursing to support a pilot program that has seen 160 new nursing schools adopt the white coat ceremony for nursing. The faculty, staff, and students of Eleanor Mann are honored to have our, our school selected to participate in this ceremony. This is actually our ninth white coat ceremony here at the Eleanor Mann School of Nursing. So students, the Gold Foundation has presented each of you with a pin to commemorate this day. So what I'd like you to do right now is look at your pin. And you notice that it is what we call a Mobius loop. And that loop on the pin symbolizes a continuous bond of trust, respect, and communication that connects healthcare professionals with their patients. I would encourage you to wear this pin every day as a reminder of your oath to keep healthcare human. So at this time, I would like to introduce Mackenzie Can Cannon. She's a graduating senior nursing student, and she has graciously agreed to come speak to you today about your journey as a nursing student. Hello, so as Dr. Patton said, my name is Mackenzie and I actually serve as the volunteer coordinator at Eleanor Mann on the Student Nurses Association Board. I am honored to be here to witness and congratulate you and applaud you on your incredible accomplishment of receiving your white coat. Three semesters ago, I eagerly sat where you were sitting and crossed this stage to receive my white coat as well. Little did I know that from that moment on, opportunities I never could have imagined would follow, and doors would open that would not only change my life, but also allow me to make a large impact on our community, even as a student. As a student that will soon have your white coat, you will hold an immense amount of power. I know many of you are anticipating and waiting for the day that you receive your registered nurse license and have two very special letters, RN, on your ID badge but I'd like to tell you that having student nurse written across your ID badge places you in a position that is equally as impactful and exciting. Many of you chose this profession because you desire to serve, change, and improve people's lives. That does not start when you graduate or when you pass the NCLEX. That begins today. And as a student nurse who can now enter the clinical setting, you have the power to decide to what degree you are willing to commit yourself to impacting others, what that impact looks like, and who that impact reaches. I have tried to come up with an equation or a list or a quote that could tell you how to most effectively serve and impact patients, but I can't because each of you will have a unique way in caring for others, a unique passion or reason for choosing nursing, and a unique patient population you want to work within. Your individuality is valuable and it's what makes our profession stronger. But the one common conclusion that I can draw and the one word of advice that I can give you when it comes to impacting others as a student nurse is love. Throughout clinicals and nursing school, you will become a family member to some, a friend to many, and an advocate and support system to everybody. Love those people accordingly. 
Over the next two years, your clinical group will become like family. Your peers uniquely understand what it's taken to get to where you are today and the road ahead to becoming a nurse, including the trials, the joys, and every moment in between. You will laugh together, cry together, and become the nurses you have dreamt of becoming together. My clinical group has stayed constant throughout nursing school, and I've found that there is no one better to celebrate success with and to process difficult days with than with my future coworkers. Love is empathetic, and you can find that love within each other. Over the next two years, you will meet patients that you connect with and build professional friendships with. As a student, you have the incredible opportunity to follow, learn from, and participate in the role of the nurse. You also have the extraordinary opportunity of time, an amount of time in clinicals that is unrestricted that you may not experience once you graduate, and I advise you to take advantage of that opportunity. Slow down and learn your patient's stories. Invest in their care from admission to discharge and truly hear what they have to say. Spending quality time with your patients will reveal more to you than a medical record can and will leave you with memories, motivation, and a passion that will continue to shape your nursing craft years into the future. The most impactful patients that I've encountered were the ones I invested the most time in, regardless of their history, diagnosis, or outcomes. Love has no time limit. Over the next two years, you will witness the interdisciplinary nature of our profession and its connection to various other fields that impact health and well-being. As nurses who are passionate about our patients, we strive to do everything we can to create better patient care and outcomes, which includes going beyond the daily duties of bedside nursing. Some of you will contribute to nursing through research, some through policy change, some through community engagement, and some through continuing education. Whatever your specialty focus, passion, or patient population may be, I encourage you to ask yourself what you can do outside of clinical setting to create an impact, because love goes beyond. Loving relationships within this profession are what will create the biggest impact on others and what will support you towards success. It's an honor to be given the opportunity to love others daily through your job. So let your white coat not only symbolize your transition into clinical practice, but also be a symbol of love. Love for the profession, love for your patients, and love for service. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to introduce Mr. Hall, who's actually responsible for the clinical training of all these students. So he will introduce the students and the clinical faculty who are present. Thank you. Hello. I just want to say I'm really proud of you guys. I've been working with you guys for what, like a dozen weeks now? And you guys have proven to be incredibly adaptable and good, and, and you're proven to be very good at what you do. And I personally am proud of you, and I'm pretty sure all your clinical instructors over there are proud of you. So I'm gonna announce them first. You know, I've got Teresa Clark right over here, Lauren Hadaway, Marcus Bowles, BJ Garrett, and Tara Hawley. They showed up to see you guys put your own cloaks on. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, we would have them cloak you, but it's pretty cool, huh? All right, let's get this underway. Somebody come up here. Aaron Angel. Alyssa Arnold. <laughs> Bailey Bear. <laughs> Sydney Blackburn. Kristen Butler. Anna Beck. Kristen Byler.
Trang Do. Avery Dillingham. You can make a show up if you want. Caitlin Deshawn. Jordan Davis. Taylor Colby. <laughs> Sally Clemens. <laughs> Albert Carabajo. Good job. Good job, Albert. Raymond Cabarcas. That a boy. Anna Eric. Hannah Falk. Steel Fisher. Anna Fache. Anna Frialdenhoven. Emma Garfield. Keith Lee Griffin, she's down here. Cameron Jesperson. Amanda James. Riley Holland. McKenna Headley. Avery Hartley. Veronica Hansen. Ashton Haley. Yay Young. Emma Koch. Molly Kressel. <laughs> Chloe Kowalski. <laughs> Olivia Lett. <laughs> Julia Lewis. Sarah Maxson.
Grace McGuire. Amanda Meyer. Kylie Oakhill. Sarah Norton. Tiffany Wynn. Sophia Nelson. Channing McCurdy. Madison Morris. Lily Morricone. Claire Moncrief. Jocelyn Osornio. Kennedy Parsons. Madison Peltier. Riley Persine. Kennedy Preston. Kate Price. Julia Rice. Lamaya Shekels. <laughs> Abby Seuss. <laughs> Kaylee Schmoll. <laughs> Sarah Russell. Carly Russell. Emma Robinson. Brianna Roberto. Madison Rankin. Lexi Quinn. <laughs> Ashley Shelton. You're good. You're good. Reagan Siebert. <laughs> Sailor Sizemore. Reagan Smith Peters. Erica Soderberg. Maria Soriano. What's up? 
Emily Staldler. Stalder. I said it wrong. Lauren Stanbridge. Sadie Stark. Jane Stevens. Kiri Holder. Faith Densing. Brooklyn Terns. Landry Williams. Anna Wilcox. Big round of applause for you guys. <laughs> Welcome to the profession. I hope that you have many, many good years in it. Okay, I think I'll just keep these cards and use them for graduation. <laughs> that puts a little bit of pressure on you, right? Okay, at this point, um, Dr. Franks is going to come up and lead you in the recitation of the nurse's oath. Okay, if you guys will stand with me, we will say this oath together. And we'll read it together. As a student, of the Eleanor Mann School of Nursing, I pledge to enter the profession of nursing with the understanding that honesty, accountability, professionalism, and ethics will guide my practice. As a student nurse dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge that I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care, promote professional relationships focused on the needs of the patient, accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence, promote, advocate for, and strive to protect the health, safety, and rights of the patient. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. I take this oath voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which the public entrusts me. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> okay, students, uh, with your white coat, your stethoscope, your new knowledge of pathophysiology and pharmacology, you should be feeling pretty empowered. We know how hard you work to get to this ceremony today. You've already faced many challenges and many sacrifices. At times, I'm sure you even questioned your own abilities and your motives. Clinical training is the heart and soul of nursing education, but it doesn't come without its own set of trials. As you embark on this nursing path, what you currently know of nursing pathology pharmacology, and calculations will change. And you will come to know the truth of nursing, philosophy, psychology, sociology, ethics, art, and politics. You're going to meet so many people on the way, patients, relatives, staff. You will go home at the end of each shift and say to yourself, wow, I was able to make a difference for somebody's child somebody's mother, somebody's husband. There's nothing better, and there's no other job that I know of where you get to do that every single day. It has been an unprecedented year. I cannot go without talking about that. I have to keep reminding myself that we're making history. You will forever be talking about how you entered school, nursing school, during a pandemic. 
and I never, ever thought I would be leading a nursing program through such a strange time. Yes, it's a challenge, but one thing I can guarantee you is that you will encounter many challenges in your nursing career. I'm already so proud of you for the flexibility and the resilience you've demonstrated this year. Since resilience is a key characteristic of successful nurses, I'm determined that you're going to be the best nurses ever. So when I'm faced with challenges, I often turn to art. And I'm an avid, avid consumer of art that expresses the essence of nursing. So I'm always looking for authors, people that write about nursing. And it's kind of hard to find. But I did find a poem that I want to share with you. It's called Just a Nurse. It's written by Suzanne Gordon. And I suspect she is a nurse. So I'm just a nurse. I just make a difference between life and death. I'm just a nurse. I just have the educated eyes that prevent medical errors, injuries, and other catastrophes. I'm just a nurse. I just make a difference between healing, coping, and despair. I'm just a nurse. I just make the difference between pain and comfort. I'm just a nurse. I'm just a nurse researcher who helps nurses and doctors get better, safer, and more effective care. I'm just a nurse. I'm just a professor of nursing who educates the future generations of nurses. I'm just a nurse. I work in a major teaching hospital managing and monitoring patients who are involved in cutting edge experimental medical research. I'm just a nurse. I just educate patients and families about how to maintain their health. I'm just a nurse. I'm just a geriatric nurse practitioner and I make the difference between staying in one's home and going to a nursing home. I'm just a nurse. I make the difference between dying in agony and dying in comfort and with dignity. I'm just a nurse. I'm the real bottom line in healthcare. Don't you wanna be just a nurse too? So, in closing, uh, I would like to say, first of all, um, you probably noticed in your seat a thank you note. And this comes from the um, Service Learning Initiative students and um, volunteers who wanted to thank you for all the work you've done this year on helping to prevent the spread of the virus by participating in screening or, um, and or um, immunization clinics. And I'm really proud. Everywhere I go, people say, your nursing students are doing a great job. And you know that's just across the community. So um, I thank you. And obviously, you, you've got a thank you note. So also share that with other nurses that you know. So in closing, um, I wish all of you just nurses um, the countless rewards yet to come. Um, thank you for coming. And thank you, families and friends, for, for watching and participating in this ceremony um, in, a, in a strange but effective way. Um, and at least we're going to finish before the basketball game starts, so everybody should be happy about that. So good evening. Um, be safe driving home, and I'm sure I'm going to see you around. Um, one more person I'd like to thank, and that's Dr. Franks. I, as I mentioned, this is the ninth ceremony we've had. She's done such an excellent job of organizing this and making sure that they go smoothly every semester. So please give her a hand. Oh.